Okay, good afternoon. Uh, um, to, the work I'm going to present here is a project that, um, in which I have been involved for, uh, started four years ago. Actually, the support for the, the, the funding is, is finishing this year from the original sources. And now, uh, the, the, what we are doing now is, yeah, thanks to the, to the support that we are getting now through the Maria Maetsu. But uh, again, since uh, uh, the Maria Maetsu is starting, what I'm going to do, really spend most of the time, is describing uh, what is, to give con context to what we are doing, describing the, the, what had happened in the whole project. Uh, uh, during these uh, and uh, during the four years, so what is the, the the idea, the goal of the project, and then at the end go and describe uh, uh, specifically what is the work that we are going to do uh, under the Maria del Maetsu. Okay, so is uh, so it's about uh, distributed computing, but uh, we are taking uh, a view uh, that is uh, somehow driven by data. Okay. So it's actually a relatively, uh, well, I will, you will see, so let's continue. So let's start uh, by a simple uh, motivation. So uh, this is uh, uh, how uh, networks, uh, routing works in networks. So if you have a network uh, of nodes like that, what it is is that each node uh, is stored at a table, like the one is there. This is a uh, standard uh, routing uh, algorithms called distance vector uh, protocol. And what it is is that you store a, a, a table in which uh, when you say, when you receive a message that says that is going to, let's say, node D, it says where to send it, okay? In this case, it's called distance because somehow what it is is that this table uh, ha is, has been built uh, somehow using these values that are there, the numbers that are there, so to to, uh, to get to uh, using the shortest path when there is this. So each node has this value, okay? So these, these tables, okay? There are uh, other, uh, other, uh, other uh, algorithms or protocols, and this, this one is called path vector routing, that is a little bit different. What it is is that instead of, instead of putting uh, just the next hop, what it, what it puts somehow is a path of uh, how to get to the, to the, and the reason for that is that in many situations there are reasons or uh, policies that say, hmm, I am not going to use the shortest path, I'm going to use this other path, let's say for, uh, I have contractual agreements with uh, somehow that part of the network and then I have to use it and I cannot use the other one, or for security reasons, I don't want to use the, the ones outside, I want to use a different one, so, but again, Again, what it is is that each node, in order to do this, to, in order, has a table of this form in which you say, okay, if a message comes from this to, to go to this direction, this is what I need to do next, what, are you, uh, what I have to, <coughs> what I'm going to follow. So the question is how these tables are computed. So how this, this, this information is computed. So what it is is that <coughs> if you have uh, the information uh, centralized, so if somehow you have all the data about the network, what are the nodes, what are the links, what are the values, okay? There are standard computer, al computer science, al there are many standard algorithms to do that, okay? Uh, uh, Dijkstra algorithms, there are many, many algorithms to do this, and what it is is that uh, uh, there is uh, uh, this um, uh, uh, language based on logic, uh, that is uh, somehow an extension of the relational database that is able to describe the centralized version of this algorithm very succinctly, okay? So this algorithm that is here somehow centralized. If you have the information of the whole network centralized, you are able to compute this, somehow all the, these tables centralized. And, so, <coughs> and the idea is to do, so uh, it's a, it's a simple recursive uh, procedure in which uh, what you start is first collecting the paths the direct, using direct links. This is the first rule that you see there. The second rule, what it is, is that extends the path by an extra link, okay? So what it, at, at that point, you collect all the possible paths, and then there is an extra computation after you do the collection of all the paths, 
that somehow picks the best cost. The best cost in this particular case is the number of hops, but you could put your own policy in which best could be uh, something specific like security or contracts in which uh, you define what is best based on that. And then after this is computed, somehow you create the routing tables, okay? So what it is, is this is a notation for relational databases in which you have a relational call routing table like this one in which you have the arguments, okay? And this is <laughs> where, you, where you are computing if you have all these stored in a relational database. So the observation that was done uh, around uh, eight years ago is that uh, this logical system, so it is based on mathematical logic, by simple uh, new interpretation of, <coughs> of, of uh, some of the symbols there, you can actually do the computation distributedly. So that you don't need to have the information locally, but distributedly. So you can, the you, what you do is you copy the same, let's say the same program, the same set of rules in every node, and what you do is that by annotations, this annotation, what it means is where this, uh, somehow this uh, particular computation is going to land, okay? So actually it's not, uh, I don't think it's, it's very important to understand exactly what is the meaning of this, but what, what it is, is is that, that now we take the same program, okay, that we had before to do the construction uh, uh, somehow uh, centralized, and by just a simple reinterpretation re of how the computation is done, so you are able to do this computation in a distributed manner. That is actually the way that is computed in reality. So <coughs> in reality, uh, when, when you have a switch or, or a router, you have a program written there inside, usually <coughs> uh, that started, let's say, in C or, uh, or a language of that sort, that computes this. They don't use this, this type of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, languages, programming languages, what they use is standard programming languages to generate this table. And these programs are running all the time, all the time, because there are updates. And here is the same. So the difference, what happens here is that, uh, or, or the interest of our work has been, aha, now we have a description of the system that is not C, there is something a little, uh, is, is more formal, more mathematical, okay, in which we can interpret this uh, using uh, mathematical logic and do analysis. Okay? So, uh, the, uh, and as, at the same time, we can use it because this, you can implement in a relational database. So you can actually use this, uh, more or less the same, the same syntax that we had here and actually run the program without doing anything else, okay? So motivation, more motivation. What is, why, why this is important? Why to think about this uh, new language, this, form this formalization of, of uh, uh, distributed programs, like this simple program that is used in routing? And for that, I give you another simple example. This is a, in a completely different situation. I, uh, this is a distributed voting algorithm. The algorithm has uh, one, two, three, five steps. Okay, the, the first step is that each node has an initial opinion, either good, that is the light color, or bad, that is the dark color, okay? So what the, do, the nodes are going to do is to communi communicate their opinions to the neighbors. They're going to say, Puck, I, so I, got, I have a good opinion or a bad opinion. So <coughs> the next is that the nodes are going to receive these different votes from the, from the neighbors, and then, by majority, they will decide if they start being good or bad, okay? And if they switch, what they have to do is inform the neighbor that they, they change, and they repeat, okay? So this is a simple algorithm uh, to do voting, and, <coughs> and the question is, does this algorithm terminate, okay? So, uh, in actually, in, in, in this way of computing, what is called is convergence. So, because it's a repeat loop that you start working, 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 and sometimes the nodes not need to do compute anymore. They somehow go to a stable situation. Okay. So, <laughs> the, 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 as you see, this algorithm is very simple. Okay. It's um, just a very, actually, more than a table, you have a single value. 
And what you are doing, you are sending the value around uh, according to some simple criteria that is counting something that they have in a table, the number of votes of the neighbors, and then repeat. Okay? So answering this question is difficult because computational in, in distributed computing, as opposed to uniprocessor computing, computational nodes lack knowledge of the global state. So when you do computation, you don't know about what is happening in the other nodes. There is no global time frame available to the nodes. So they are, in general, the clocks are not synchronized. It's very difficult. It's a hard problem to synchronize nodes. No? And there is non-determinism, because when you send a message, you don't know when it's going to arrive. Okay? So for the programmer, when they see, when he sees the program, it's very difficult to, hmm, is this program correct? Is the program doing what I want to do? Because there are factors somehow that are difficult to visualize. Okay? So, <coughs> so what is the project, the, has been the project focus? The project focus is to try to use this idea of a more declarative description of the problem in order to be able to answer questions as is this program to, going to converge, okay? So the standard uh, pro programming uh, mechanisms that exist uh, in software engineer is that you, and, and even here you describe your algorithm in some pseudocode. Sometimes it is a, a formal uh, uh, specification could be. Then taking that, you prove the correctness of the, that the code is going to do what you, you want. The, the algorithm is going to do what you want. After you make sure that the algorithm is correct, then you implement it. You take this algorithm and write it in C or write it in Java. Okay. And then after that, you have to actually run it. So you have to check that the implementation somehow matches the the code or the algorithm that you described at the very beginning. So there is a mismatch there. So you have to make sure that the actual code that you are writing act is capturing precisely what the algorithm does. And this is not an obvious step. <coughs> and finally, of course, you deploy and you execute. Okay? So <coughs> the idea here is that we want to reduce these steps. Okay? So we want to describe the algorithm in a declarative language, in something mm, mathematically precise in which we can symbolically prove that that particular piece of uh, code written in this declarative language is correct, and then after that, deploy it. So we don't have to do this translation, the translation to C, because the language in which we describe the problem, that is, uh, is an extension of SQL, is the same language that implements the algorithm. There is nothing to change, okay? So you prove that your program is correct. What happens in general is that you have to do checks or proofs about C, the program C or Java, in order to do here we don't have uh, uh, that somehow coincides with the algorithm. Here we don't have that because we are writing the algorithm uh, directly in the, in the same language that is going to be implemented, okay? So, of course, this is not a general programming, programming language that we are going to use. So, uh, and what it is, is uh, an SQL-based inspired distributed computational model. So what we, we are thinking is, is each node, we have a relational database, okay? <laughs> and somehow what is happening is that you do queries there, and depending on the results of the queries, you send data, messages <laughs> to, other, to other nodes that is data. There are also pieces of uh, databases, okay? So the specification is, is directly executable, and at the same time, the specification we can, because it's uh, written in these languages, this precise language based on mathematical logic, that we can do uh, actually analysis uh, using many techniques that exist in theory improving. Okay. So what we have done is in our computing, uh, computing framework is we have these languages. Uh, uh, that uh, in which we can describe the protocols or the programs, and uh, given a particular environment, this environment could be, let's say, uh, a network of computers, or you, have, you can have a network of virtual machines, or you can have a single processor, in which, a single machine in which you are going to have many processes talking to each other, something in which you, you want to do distributed computation. Okay? It could be uh, in a network, or it could be in a different way. Okay? in which uh, somehow what it is, is you are implementing a distributed program. So there, what we do is that 
we have to somehow play with the engineering part of how uh, the, the description of the algorithm that is written in this language communicate underneath using uh, standard protocols. Okay? It could be remote uh, procedure calls if it's in a particular uh, application, or it could be using TCP if you are in a different situation. So it depends. So our system, we have the, so the programming language, but underneath we need to somehow uh, have all these tools in order to be able to actually deploy the system and run it. <coughs> So, in addition to that, we have a, si a simulation environment. The simulation environment is driven to networks. It's driven to uh, uh, networks in the sense that you are not going to do, the communication is going to be passed through switches or through routers. Uh, the communication could uh, uh, somehow, the, the nodes can move. And, uh, and the network can change, you can add. So the simulation uh, uh, somehow, uh, helps you to at least test uh, what is going to happen in, inside this uh, simulated environment. Okay, so we we, we have uh, developed that. And the last part and the most relevant to what we are doing is this abstraction that we are having because we are writing this in this SQL-like language. Okay. So in this SQL -like language, what we have is we have the description of the protocol that is in this logic. We need to have somehow the description the initial description of the global state of the network, so how the network works. And in addition, so in order to do the actual uh, analysis, complete analysis, we need to somehow know something about the communication. And this is standardly done by using somehow a description of how the links behaves. Okay, and <laughs> using, it says there, there is an I.O. automaton. So I will explain more in detail about what is this, but the idea is that somehow we need to capture what is the, somehow, the protocol, the mechanisms of communication, because we can, it can be synchronous communication, could be asynchronous communication, could be reliable, could not be reliable. There are many conditions that could happen there. And in order to do the analysis, you need to know that. Okay, so <laughs> this part is also uh, required to be in, in the uh, system analysis. What is this then is that we take this and we are able to use techniques from model checking that is very common for theory improving uh, situations in which we, con we, we are able to build a global transition graph of the whole system, everything, the whole system. And what we do is based on this global transition graph, we are able to somehow ask queries that provide us answers like, is this program going to converge? I mean, so, so that's, the, that's, the, that's the, the idea of the whole framework. Mm -hmm. So uh, getting more into the details of, uh, of, of the different components of the framework. The first one is this distributed state machine system in which, as I said before, uh, somehow when you are at, before deploying the application, before deploying what you want to do, you have to describe how the communication happens so you are able to give directives of how the network in which you are going to be the deployment is going to work, how, what type of communication. For example, you can say that there is a communication, there is a tree, and so the communication is in one direction, or the communication is only between parent and child, or it's a, a regular network in which everybody talks to everybody else. All these things have to be somehow specified. The other thing is how to, you, so you have to inject data, you can inject data to, to each local node, it, uh, <laughs> so how to inject the data and how to store the data locally. So we, you can have, <laughs> we have several, uh, two types of implementation, one in which the data is actually stored as relational database, and the other is in which we use uh, just Java objects as uh, the data. Uh, and in addition, there is something independent, actually like, again very more uh, in the engineering part, that somehow you are able to put policies in order to somehow uh, stop traffic based on things that are meta of the system in order to protect. Okay, so but <laughs> actually our, our analysis system uh, 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 doesn't work with all this. So, so we are not able to analyze a program that, for example, uses uh, Java as a data model or uses uh, policies. So we are, no, we are staying in the, somehow in the, in the, in the most uh, uh, simple system in which everything is based on relational databases and there are no policies uh, to filter uh, the, <coughs> the communication between nodes. Mm. 
So to give you a, a better, more understanding how it happens, so a node, what it is, is a, a, a database that contains the state, the current state of the system. And what it is is there are two inputs. So it's model like an, an input output state automata in which the state is represented by a relational database. And there are two types of input. One input that can be done by the application itself. Okay, so the local node, I can say, okay, I am right now joining this particular, uh, let's say, Skype. I right now in this moment uh, connecting to Skype. So my local node will somehow send information to a node that, okay, that says Jorge is connecting to Skype. So this is local. The other are these messages. So you can receive messages from other nodes saying, okay, this has happened in my node, or I want this from you. From you. So, so what it is is that uh, uh, this input uh, that could be from the application or from, or from uh, other nodes will somehow trigger a change of state. And as I say, so what it is that the, the, the uh, data, the state, is represented by a relational database tables. And the messages are snips of relations, relational tables. So you send also relational tables. So what the programmer has to define is this function, the transition function. What happened? This message arrives, what I have to do. If this is the input, what I have to do? And that's the program. But the program is going to be limited <laughs> uh, to uh, this uh, 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 SQL condition. So what the only thing that you can do is to make a query <laughs> to the current state of the state, the current state of the system and the system where you are moving. Okay, so you are somehow able to see, okay, if this is happening, I am going to start computing something, okay, and collect information that is going to be part of the current state. So is this possibility of doing this iteration that allows us to build somehow the, the table? So for example, in the, in the routing, in the routing uh, problem, a message could be, oh, from a, from a, from a node says, okay, I found this path to this destination. And then the node receives this and says, ah, okay, I need to check my other paths. And I do, uh, what are the current paths? And now need to start computing to see what is the resulting path. If I have to change my mind, if I have to change my table, because now I am learning about a better path. So that's uh, the process. But all this is, doing, is being done with SQL. And the part of the computation is that this extension of SQL that has been uh, available for more than 10 years is that you are able to write Recursive SQL queries. That's the only thing. Okay. So uh, I think I'm going to skip this example uh, and go to the simulation. So the simulation uh, environment is based in a, in a system that has been developed in the United States for the. Uh, it's, it's an open source system and the, but was developed for uh, by the Army Research Lab of the United States called Core. And what it is, is an emulator of, of networks. And in the emulation, you are able to describe switches, you are able to describe networks, you are, you are able to describe how good the connection between the, the nodes is, throughput, and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, times for uh, loss of, of traffic and all this. And then what we are able to do is to, uh, we are able to somehow uh, deploy these uh, different, uh, um, the different uh, state machines inside this simulator. And what you are able to do is to run this simulator, see, modify on the fly so you can somehow uh, see the network, uh, the current state of the network, and move elements around. Uh, for example, move it far away if it's a, a wireless connection, move it far away from the network so that the connection breaks because it's too far away or bring it closer so the connection appears, so that messages could appear, or, or connections could appear, disappear on the fly, in order to test the program, okay? So at, at the end, you can, this uh, this uh, full system in which you can retain logs and then analyze, analyze logs and see how the system is working. So that allows the programmer to somehow debug how the system works. So it's very, in that sense, it's very programmer-oriented. Uh, programmer, see, oriented in the sense that is that tool for him to somehow debug this particular problem that the system is fully distributed. Mm -hmm. So, doing analysis. Now, this uh, going to 
So given that we have a formal description about how each node in the network does local computation, can we verify if the local computation will terminate? That was the initial question. Let's start with that <coughs> problem. So, so the question, as I said before, cannot be answered if you don't know what is the communication between the system, okay? How, are it, how, how the communication happens, what is the protocol? So the way that the system is, uh, is, is uh, thought or devised, uh, there is a basic consideration, and that is we consider only a message passes uh, communi as communication mode, the passing message, because there are other, other architectures that can be used, but we, the, only, the, the one that we, we describe here, or the one that we study in our system, is just message passing. That is the most common in distributed system <coughs> that are from different computers, let's say. Uh, so, now, after this is designed, what happened in the communication? The communication is how the channel, how the links behave. So what, one of the things that we are doing is that we are going to assume that the order, the analysis that we have done is that the order is preserved. Because that's also the only thing that could happen, that you send two messages in, in one order and they can arrive in, dif in different orders. So this is a possibility. We, we have been doing work in this moment uh, in which the order is preserved. Uh -huh. so, uh, the important part is that the description of how the dynamics, the dynamics of the network happens can be written in the same language that we are using to describe the other protocol. So we can write rules, relational database rules, that describe this behavior of the system. Okay? The only part that is important to be able to do this is that the, you should allow, or the, there has to be allowed non-determinism. So there has to be somehow a way of describing probabilistic results when you do the computation in the communication. Okay, so in order to, to, do, to be able to simulate this. So, so what we have is that we had defined uh, rules to do synchronous models and asynchronous models. So, and not just that, even though we, we, do, we have done analysis, or the analysis tools for uh, 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 when there is a, a preservation of the order, it's very, it's very easy to modify somehow the models to, for example, a model when order is not preserved. Also, model in which the, the communication is unreliable, when you lose messages. So all these things can be uh, somehow uh, relatively easy added to the system in the same language, in the same formal language. And the important part of that is that then we can take that <laughs> and do analysis. So the analysis task takes this mathematical model in logic and uses the standard techniques to describe somehow the state of the system. And the state of the system is somehow takes the, the union of all the states, take the union of the links. This is a standard uh, mm, mm, uh, uh, definitions that are used uh, in, uh, the, in distributed computing to do um, manual uh, uh, proofs that correctness of algorithms, what the advantage that, they, that we have is that we don't have to do it manually. All this description can be do automatically and then uh, describe all these states based, based on, on this, uh, in, in this uh, mathematical model and then from there, use uh, uh, somehow uh, uh, tools that they are coming from uh, model checking to do the analysis. And what it is is that so we are able, even though there could be millions of millions of states, we are able to build uh, a, a, a representation of the system with all these uh, all, all these nodes and links because we have a very compact representation of states, very very compact. So so and then what happens is that instead of doing analysis on the on the, on, the, on the symbols, on the, on, the, on the structure of the program, what we do is analysis of the graph. So what it is is a convergent state, state is a global state with, in which all the queues are empty. So what we have to identify is states in this graph where the queues are empty and then that means, because the meaning of the queue is empty is that there are no messages, no messages there. So everything stops. So nobody, nobody is putting messages, and that means that it's stopping. So to detect that, so what we, not, we need to do is, if we want to check, for example, if the system sometimes converges, because, because of non-determinism uh, 
It might not be all the cases. So what we have to see, to look is if there exists a state in which the, these queues are empty. So we have to look uh, in these states and traverse the system and see if we, <coughs> if we find these states. The, for oscillations, what we have to do is to look for loops in the graph. So the, all these algorithms are very, very fast. You can do, because now you are doing graph uh, traversal algorithms, okay? Uh, existence of permanent oscillations means that you can somehow are able to stay in a loop without being able to reach somehow. There is no possibility of reaching a, a one of these states of, okay? Always convergence is, is that you are not able to get into loops. Uh, and never convergence is the absence of. So what it is is that you are now transforming, we are transforming all the problems, all the re, uh, related to convergence, to uh, properties of the graph. That the graph could be is humongous, no? So it could be very large because there are many states. So to give you an idea, so <laughs> one thing is this problem has been, are known to, are, to be computationally very hard. Okay? So it's not that we are dealing with uh, uh, easy problems. So what it is is that what we are doing is taking advantage of all this knowledge about how to do theory improvement and how to represent a state, how to do model checking to try to solve the problems at least in a reasonable way <coughs> and see how far we can get. So what we did is we took these algorithms, it is called B B BGP, that is a gateway, gateway algorithm that is known to, uh, uh, to, you can, so it's very similar to what I say, policies, to decide what are the paths, what are you going to do, you can put policies. And the users can define their own policies. And what happens is that this algorithm, uh, you can somehow set policies that it doesn't converge. Mm -hmm. So it, what it has been proved is that uh, there is a sufficient property of the network configuration that ensures that there are no divergence, that the system will always converge. And the sufficient property is that doesn't exist a particular topology that they call the dispute wheel. Okay? It's not important to know that uh, uh, how a dispute wheel, what is important to know is that, okay, if the, if the network doesn't have this dispute wheel, the system will converge. The thing is that there is only, only a sufficient condition. The meaning is that the, the dispute wheel is there, you don't know what is going to happen, and it's very difficult to check. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> what we did was to somehow uh, implement, describe the BGP algorithm in our system, and introduce dispute wheels to see what happens if we were able to analyze. And uh, here is what we get. So, so uh, we, we have networks, okay, the largest network, so we, we try larger ones, but uh, the largest network in which we were able to say something meaningful was with eight nodes, okay? So you can imagine how difficult it is. So, but we, uh, uh, we were, well, we are a state of the art, okay? So nobody can do more than that. So there are other techniques that what you have to do is to take the topology and try to somehow uh, reduce the topology, removing things that are unnecessary, simplify in order to make the, the, the network small. Okay? And somehow big, like super nodes, as opposed to the whole, the whole uh, network, in order to be able to do this. Okay? And you can see that in order to be able to work with these uh, 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 somehow uh, networks of H nodes, uh, it was, this is in, in, in minutes, in order, in the, 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 that's all the, the time uh, <coughs> uh, that, that took, okay? So there is a, uh, another uh, typical configuration that is used in the, in the field called the surprise wheel, the, su uh, the surprise gadget. The surprise gadget is a network topology that contains one of these dispute wheels, but uh, it's very difficult to see that this is going to converge, okay? So sometimes when this surprise wheel appears in a particular configuration, the system actually terminates and sometimes it doesn't terminate. So it's very difficult to determine manually if this is going to happen. So we did experiments in, in this, and we were able to do things that people were not able to do before. There was somehow, again, uh, 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 do analysis over, over this practical system, that is the BGP protocol, and again, we have results about if always converts, sometimes converts, <coughs> or never converges. Okay? So, 
So you see, these are, uh, at the end, networks that are small, so there is still a lot of work to do manually in order to be able to get to situations that when somebody wants to do the analysis, he has to somehow isolate where is the area of the network that he wants to analyze in order to be able to do this. Okay. However, <coughs> the thing is that this, uh, this, this, uh, this, uh, this type of computation is not only for networks, for, for, for uh, algorithms of routing. This is a general computational algorithm uh, mechanism method that uses this relational database. So <laughs> the, the, the goal or our, our uh, project in, in the Maya El Maezzo is to actually try to verify formally how difficult it is to do analysis under these conditions, the conditions of the, the of, of this computational model. That is relational databases as states and you send you send uh, somehow data based on relational databases and you restrict your computations to these SQL uh, recursive rules. Okay? There are actually, uh, my, our language is not the only one. There are several of them in different, in different places, uh, developed in different, in, in, in different parts of the world. There are, UPenn has one, uh, Berkeley has one. There are different places. There is another in, in, in Germany that, uh, that they do this type of computations based on this idea of on relational databases. So, so the collaboration here, I started this uh, with Victor because I am not a specialist in complexity. I need somehow so help in the complexity, complexity <coughs> area. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, at the same time, I also uh, uh, contacted uh, people that has worked in uh, actually in web services that has a feeling that is very similar uh, 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 to that are specialists in complexity in order to help us also with the work. And we have some preliminary results as we have from uh, like half a year ago uh, with the, the collaborators in uh, University of Bolzano. And the results are very limited, so we assume a reliable communication and a fixed topology during the execution. So we, don't, we cannot change the, the... We also classify uh, the input classes, so how the system could, could be. A closed system is that doesn't receive input from the outside. The only thing that happens in the system are messages going on between nodes. An autonomous system is a system in which the input happens only at the very beginning. So only you receive input just at the very beginning. There are many situations in this that happens, but it still is limited. And the last one is interactive, okay, that you can introduce input at any moment during the system. Okay? So the, the thing that, uh, again, is, probably is, is new for the, the, uh, the, the distributed community uh, um, 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 Community, distributed community results is that we are using a concept that is inspired in databases that is called boundedness. And boundedness is related to the amount of, uh, of uh, the, the, the size of the languages, the, the size of the language that is, uh, uh, that is uh, somehow uh, uh, available in a particular snapshot of the system. And what it is, is that if you bound that, if you say that you cannot have more than, let's say, 20 million symbols, and this is fixed for the, the, the whole uh, life of the system, then you are able to do somehow proof. Uh, so there are disability uh, problems, disability uh, uh, questions that are resolved by just putting that. And notice, this is, this is not saying, okay, <laughs> this is not saying that there is no, there is no, that there is no, an infinite number of symbols. What it is, you can have infinite number of symbols, but you can never have in a particular state more than a fixed amount um, that, that could be very large. Okay? So based on that, uh, what we obtained uh, was that well, the, the analysis of convergence in the, different con in the different situations, in many situations is undecidable, but we also, so we got that in, 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 in other situations, very uh, uh, precise uh, solution, uh, uh, answers, and most of the problems are in, in, in the p-space complete space. So it's a little bit, it's harder than in p, so it's an exponential, 
exponential space. So this is what we have right now, very, very limited. And what really we want to do is to uh, study complexity on the specific types of topologies and how see how this affects. If we have rings, trees, mesh, that is a little bit more, you, you have more information about to, to work about. Uh, also studying the complexities of, of, the, of when the, the, the system is changing, when the network is changing. And last, look for other properties that are not this convergence. Sometimes you don't need to converge. You need somehow to just to look for properties that each node maintains. Okay, so example, the node never, have never done this, have never get to this, state, this particular state. So are more local properties uh, that are very useful. So we are looking to see, so to understand better the complexity in order to help to develop new analysis tools. Uh, I think that's it, sir. and with zero time. Can you have a sort of use a general language to express this as formulas of some logic? So I want to test whether a given LTL formula, okay, holds, okay, for this dynamic system and <laughs> things like that. I mean, will right, right, right. Very... Yeah, actually, the, the 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 complexity proofs that we have, the formal complexity proofs, are based on on um, an extension of uh, um, linear time because we need to somehow it's first order linear time. Okay, so the, that's the, the proofs are based on that particular. The implementations are not based on that, okay, but the, the proofs are. So, 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 so in, we have that language. So if you express uh, a, a particular question, the question that is about convergence, but yes, yeah, we use. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay.